Well, let's catch up now with Tim Blair from the Daily Telegraph and Mark Nicholson from Stepmate Studios. Good to catch up with you, gentlemen. I'm uh, old enough to remember when uh, mayors tended to be these uh, fine, upstanding men and women from their communities who were sort of defending the virtues and values of their area and uh, very, very uh, proud of the history of their, of their area. But in Randwick, we have a green mayor and there's a, a, a statue of Captain Cook. It's been there for 114 years. And because the odd... Uh, lunatic throws some paint on it from time to time. Mark, uh, she says it should be torn down because she just sees it as a reminder of colonial oppression anyway. It's, um, it's, it, it's demonstrative of the fact that this rot has just absolutely settled in this, it, it, the community level now. But I genuinely, I saw that the headline for this and I can't believe I'm in my mid-30s and it's gotten to the point where I'm getting furiously angry. I'm like, get your hands off my statues. <laughs> but it's, it's happened. Like, it's, it's absurd. Uh, this lady, she, the mayor, sorry, she needs to be very careful of throwing away the word removed. I think she's going to end up removed because it's uh, her and about three other people really want to get rid of this statue. That's it. Yeah, exactly. I drive past it often and uh, it's a nice little reminder mm. of history. And Mark, if you, uh, sorry, uh, Tim, if you're talking about, um, you know, uh, removing any uh, reminders of colonial oppression, well, let's get rid of the <laughs> Randwick Council. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's um, <laughs> like, why stop there? Uh, there's quite a few reminders of uh, colonialism. One, there's the office of the mayor. Two, <laughs> there's the suburb of Randwick. Three, there's the city of Sydney. Four, there's the act of vandalism, which wasn't wasn't widely known before uh, before settlement. So yeah, she's um, she's got to get moving. There's a, there's a lot to deal with out Randwick Way, and I, I commend her for this uh, this slow start. But keep going. And there's the legal tender that she gets paid with, which is very much a reminder of colonial uh, <laughs> oppression. But she's exactly. happy to suffer that kind of oppression. Apparently, let's go mm. further north. Then the more local government madness, and some uh, some uh, green councillor again in the, the Brisbane City Council wants any any company that's got anything to do with fossil fuels or profiting from fossil fuels in any ways should not get any contracts from the Brisbane City Council. Well, again, why don't we turn this around, Mark? Why don't the fossil fuel companies refuse, refuse to fuel Brisbane? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, um, you know, turn the heat off, you know, turn all the lights off. This bloke will be furious. This goes, I, what is going on at our local councils, Christopher? I cannot believe it. <laughs> that this is what, this is the top of the, this is the top of the list at our, at our local councils. This is the same bloke, by the way, that um, he wanted a 650% uh, increase to the landlord's rates. Uh, he lives on a boat on the, on, on, on the river of Brisbane, which he should speak to the mayor at Randwick because that reminds me a lot of colonial, you know, colonial <laughs> oppression. He's got to be very careful. You can always tell when you've got a Melbourne bloke talking about Brisbane affairs because she just suggests cutting <laughs> off the power or get rid of their heating. <laughs> I, I think they might use it more oh, for yeah. cooling in Brisbane. <laughs> but, but, Tim, you've got the summer shirt on there. You, you would understand. Yeah. Just, I mean, the, 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 <laughs> just the absurdity of this. The whole city runs <laughs> on, the, on, on the profits and the power of fossil fuel, but they want to rail against it. Yeah, it is, it is hilarious. I, I like, however, that the chap in question at least wears the warning scarf, you know, the scarf that tells you, hang on, I'm about to be dealing with a dickhead here. You know, let's uh, let's take a step back. He's got he's got the, you know, the solidarity scarf. But I notice he also wears eyeglasses. These are, I mean, wearing them myself. These aren't easy to make. They involve a great deal of, um, of engineering, science, great deal of input from, you know, don't have to go too far back and your spectacles are coming from uh, fossil fuel my friend so if he wants to actually see what he's talking about he wants to keep up that fossil fossil fuel um, uh, connection yeah you've, you've highlighted another stark cultural difference here yeah because if you're in melbourne and you're wearing a scarf well sometimes it's just because it's a cold day but if you're in your, in <laughs> brisbane and you're yeah. wearing a scarf and you're not going to the footy you're a wanker. <laughs> it's, yes. it's pretty obvious. <laughs> Let's go to uh, US politics. I've got to show you this stuff. So, so Joe Biden's on a talk show and he's asked the question. I can't show you the whole thing. It takes too long. But the question is about comparing <laughs> his mental acuity with Donald Trump. And he's sort of... This is Joe Biden explaining how he's sharper than Donald Trump. And look where it all ends up. Every single thing we've done, I think we've got some good things done. 
everything, and we, they told us we couldn't get them done because things were so divided. And uh, but I think everything everything we've gotten done, he's just friendly stated he wants to do away with if he gets elected. And I really think his views on where to take America are older than anyway. I know I get it. Well, Timmy certainly put that to bed. <laughs> Well, I like how the audience were queued up to laugh at, like, his, his Biden's classic fade-out line is always, anyway, when he just loses his entire train of thought, everything's just pea soup in his mind, and he just goes out with, anyway. They shouldn't have been <laughs> applauding him. They should have been, you know, just dialing up, you know, uh, some sort of medical assistance. He's about to time out there. But the other thing is that, uh, you know, he's, he's Biden's undergone a physical lately, but not the mental capability test. He does physical tests all the time. It's called climbing the stairs to Air Force One, and he fails it 50% of the time. He even fails it now when he's on the short steps for the, for the people who are a bit struggling, you know? I, look, I've often talked about uh, how he used to love to break into a little jog to show that he was young and virile and all the rest of it. Have a look at these pictures today. This is him going off to his medical, and just here when he gets onto the lawn, he breaks it, and that's it. That oh, was it. that's thrilling. He, look he at man- him go. <laughs> he managed, Mark, about half a step and a half of half a jog, but it's just showed what a sprightly yeah. fella he is. And also the Jets yeah, behind man, him. Yeah, man, and he's filled to the brim. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, to be honest, he's... he's I don't know, is he walking out to the Air Force One, the chopper one there, with a coffee or his urine sample? <laughs> well, are we sure that's the right <laughs> air, 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 aircraft? Is he just jumping on someone's random chopper? You just don't know with this bloke. That's why we can't have November soon enough. It's going to be a terrific election. Bring it on. I hope, I hope Biden stays. I hope he stays anyway, at least as long any, as the election. Anyway, the point is, Mark, that, uh, yes, he, he did the physical test, but they wouldn't give him a cognitive test. And, and his press secretary explained why he didn't need it. The president doesn't need a cognitive test. That is not my assessment. That is not my assessment. That is the assessment of the president's doctor. Uh, That is also the assessment of the neurologist, uh, who has also made that assessment as well. And, you know, and you've heard us say this, and I'll reiterate this, the president's doctor has said, if you look at what this president, the president who is also the commander in chief, he passes a cognitive test every day, every day. Wow, Mark, he's passing the test by being president every day. That means the rest of the world is an experiment at the moment. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. And, you know, they keep saying that... I think it's Jon Stewart made this point uh, last week. He was like, you know, they keep saying he's super sharp. You should see him in meetings. You know, he's he's, he's always switched on. He's super sharp. Let's see some of that. Maybe film five (laughs) seconds of that because we're not seeing anything like that at the moment. I've, uh, I've... I've never been more comforted by the idea that there is a deep state that's running the country and maybe it's Obama and he's sweating in a basement somewhere. Yeah. It's still Hillary Clinton down there. Down there. Absolutely. I would just uh-huh. like to see if I could just add one more thing. One more thing, Chris and Mark. Uh, he doesn't do very often very combative interviews. He does them with very friendly people, Joe Biden. But... If the next person he interviews, if they could just ask Joe Biden to spell cognitive, that ends the whole case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I reckon his media miners have got an answer for that question next time, and it's pass after, after what he did with that one. <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining us, Tim and Mark. We'll catch you next week.